now now cool let's see if it works uh, okay that's recording you can go down you can also go down and we're left with this one are you ready i am so ready welcome back everyone it's been quite a while i'm happy to be back um and we're back for Figma tips. Today we're talking about 10 tips to be 10 times faster in Figma. So these are all the things that I've learned throughout the years, learned from watching other people working, and it's gonna make you so much faster. It's Some of them are just mind blowing to me. Maybe they're gonna be um, something you know already, but let's let's hope for a good outcome and you'll learn something new. If you haven't, my name is Carola and I'm a product designer at Dropbox. Make sure you follow and subscribe. Um, well, can you follow and subscribe? I guess make sure you subscribe and like this video if you like what you see so that I know what to make more of. Now I wanna caveat that this is actually gonna make you 10 times faster. Absolutely proven. Um, there's been studies about it, exactly 10 times faster, not one less, not one more, you know, if you know what I mean, you know? 10 tips, so of course, 10 times. Cool. Um, we're gonna start from the basic ones and get into more complicated ones and you'll follow me in Figma while I show you. So let's start with number one, duplicate. Now I know mostly three ways to duplicate uh, objects and one is the basic simple copy paste of an object, you just um, select your screen. Actually, let's select an item, you copy, you paste it, and you've got another one here. Then there's just another way of doing it, which is to command and control, or control D on an object. And as you see, we have another duplicate here. Um, but these de behave differently if you duplicate an element or a frame. So just know that if you command D on a frame, it's gonna place it on the side. If you keep hitting command D, it's gonna place it on the side and so on and so forth. Now I created like a hundred of them. Um, so let's go back to what we had. Let's see if I can find it. No, oh, that's another one. Um, so just know this difference. Um, and third one, which some people just may not know is you can select something like this frame, hold down option, which I believe is alt on windows but you hold it down and drag. Now it doesn't stay hold on my screen, but I'm holding it. Um, and you drag it. This is super useful if you want to like, I don't know, transition something down here. And then if you keep command D, it'll duplicate in the, at the same distance as your, first, um, as your first duplicate that you actually did manually. So you can kind of control where things go. That's kind of nice. All right, that's our number one. Um, on to the next one. Okay, tip number two, resize. On resize, you could spend a bunch of time, but let's go straight to the useful part. You, as you probably know, your basic way of resizing is grabbing onto this handle on the side and just resizing like that. You see, it kind of messes things up. Um, let's say I want to resize this white thing. I want to resize it um, so that it goes down here and also up here at the same time and at the same distance. One way I could do it is, is I'll grab onto this and then hold option for it to grow from the center. This is super cool. Very useful when you're like drawing circles. Whenever you hold option, the object is going to be created from the center, which is pretty nice. But let's say I also want the top and the, I want proportions to say locked. You probably know this, this is super basic, but while you hold option you also hit shift so that it keeps it proportional nice but there's one last piece have you ever wondered like you, you've seen when i resize this how things get kind of messed up because it's a frame and things have their various constraints or they actually don't have them so that's how you mess it up well a little secret and i might have to kill you if you tell around is you just hit K, you don't even hold it, just hit K on your screen. And you'll see that this thing changed from your move tool to your scale tool. And look what you can do. And 
you can still do option and make it grow from the center. You don't need to do shift actually because it's proportionate. Isn't that super cool? Like everything grows at the same size. I've looked for this for so long and then I realized I had it in front of me all this time. All right, so that's it for number two. On to the next. Tip number three. It's sort of a continuation of tip number two, but you know, numbers are kind of... Um, let's see where we go with this. Number three, it's how to resize frames. Have you ever needed to like resize something? Um, like let's say the actual connect screen. Um, but you don't want things to move with you. You just want the frame around it to to move with you, but you don't want to deal with the constraints because you're you want to design faster. So, I mean, of course, the best way is to design better. But um, if you hold command while you make the frame larger, you'll see that. Well, this frame doesn't really have you can't see it because it's white. But let's say I make this red, you'll see that the frame underneath. Um, if I were to uh, make this larger like this, it would screw things up. But if I hold command. It doesn't use the constraints. So cool. This was also life changing. My manager told me this um, like a year ago or so, and my life was changed completely. So with this, I'll say, let's see number four. Okay, number four is a super, super basic one. And honestly, I see so many people not leveraging this, not knowing this. So this is just basic computer shortcuts. So let's say you want, um, let's zoom in a bit. You want, for some reason, this word and Thompson to be the same size as this. Now you could be a good kid and do it with styles. Like, you know, if you have a design systems, they do it <laughs> and um, you can leverage that. But let's say you're wrapping up like a really quick project. Um, what you can do is select any text style, then copy the style. And how you do that is kind of like when you copy an object, you do Command C or Control C and Command Control V. In this case, you just add Option or Alt. You add Option, you do Control Command C to copy, and then you do Option Command V. And look at that. Isn't that, I don't know, this is to me revolutionary. And you know why? Because this actually applies to so many places. Word, PowerPoint, Keynote, Maybe even Excel, I wouldn't know for sure, but this applies to everything. It's so, so universal and you'll never end up like looking, oh, which one uh, was this color? Was this the right color? You just con command, command option C and like command option V and that's a link. There you go. Easy. Done. Okay, let's keep this fast. On to number five. Okay, this is also like super well known and but someone needs to tell you for the first time, so maybe I'll be that person today. Um, if you're into design, you probably know this already, but you can nudge things of one pixel if you move your arrows. But if you want to move faster, you can hold shift and arrow around, and that moves it in 10 pixel increments. I call it like a shift move, but you can call it whatever. Um, and this is also pretty universal across apps. If you want to do it on Keynote and you're trying to design a presentation, it works and it works there too. It works on PowerPoint. It works pretty much everywhere except on freaking Google Slides, which decided to do the opposite as everyone else, where with arrows you move 10 pixels and with shift arrow you move of one pixel. So thank you, Google Slides. There you go, you've got the next one. And I'll add a bonus tip here that is if you need to change the number of your nudge, you just go on nudge amount and let's say you work on an eight pixel grid. This is going to change your life. You make nudges of eight pixels and so you'll, you'll always be within the grid. Now, don't ask me why I don't have that. I am a sick person that doesn't like comfort. And I like to have things done the hard way. I, I like to just do 10 and then back and back. It doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. Don't do it. You're, you're, the people you work with are going to hate you because you're not going to be a consistent person and you're going to have to do the extra work. So don't do like me. Use whatever grid your team uses and set your nudge amount up to that amount. Cool. Now. I mean, that was harder to explain, um, 
But yeah, let's go. Next up, tip number six. You know how if I create a rectangle here, and well, let's make it actually smaller. Let's say this is an icon or, so or something. You know how Figma, if you want to drop it into your already designed stuff, you need to figure out in which group you want it to be and it sort of auto drops it in that group. And most of the time, this is extremely helpful. Like this, it's already inside the input group and that's really cool. Uh, but let's say sometimes I don't want that. Sometimes maybe actually let's do this. I want this to be the search icon. Have please have a lot of imagination in this case. This is not a search icon, but Imagine I want this here and in some sort of animation that I want to create, I want this to still be within this group, but appear, make this something that masks um, the content and make this appear from the side, like from here, let it slide in, in some whatever project. There may be many other reasons why you want this to stay within this group while you move it around. Um, and so how do you do that? You drag it, but you see that if you do this, it's gonna remove it from the group, you see it here. So what we want to do is before it leaves the frame, before it does this, so let's um, revert it back to where it was, click on it, hold spacebar, and then drag it to wherever you want it to be. Maybe you want it to be midway here. Cool, that's, that's where it is. Or you know, one way this is super helpful is if you are actually creating arrows, let's say again, have imagination. Let's say this is an arrow and um, let's give it an end. Okay, now uh, I've got it here. Well, <laughs> I guess it's a weird arrow, but you see how it drops it inside. I want it to be on the outside and then I hold space to keep it on that outside layer. Now let's, let's make it a little bit more normal without the line arrow on this side. Um, but this is super useful when you're trying to connect things and you don't want this freaking arrow to go inside the frame. You want it to stay above and on top of everything. So you just hold the space bar while you move it around so it doesn't get in. Isn't that super cool? Hmm? All right, more goodies. This was yeah a little harder to explain, but let's get to the next one. Keep talking about layers. So tip number seven, how do you move things up and down? So let's say we have our rectangle that is sort of on top of everything. We want this to be um, as a background, you know? So what I can do is look where it is and drag it below everything that I want. But one much easier way is to hold command open square bracket to push it down. You press it as many times as you need, but this will move its position in the layer uh, list. There are some exceptions. Let's say this is inside a frame. Doing this up and down is never gonna move it um, under the frame. As you see, even if it if you don't see it anymore, it's still within the group. It will move it within whatever group it is in the layer list. But it's really pretty useful like this. So open bracket and close bracket to go up and down. All right, this was a quick one. Next one. And tip number eight, rename. Let's stay on the layers topic. You've got um, invite via email. You've got all sorts of weird names here, actually. Sorry, I apologize. But let's say we want to call this list. Um, I could right click and do all the things, but I always go for command R, which also works on most things as a rename shortcut. And I'll just name it, or I'll just name it list. And there we have it. Um, and you just hit return. Super, super easy. Uh, we're getting close to the end. So number nine, let's get to it. Okay, so tip number nine is auto layout. Auto layout is not really a tip, but the tip that I have for you is the moment that you think you might have needed auto layout, you're already too late and you should have had auto layout already. This is because if you get into the habit of making most of the things that you use as auto layout components, your life is gonna be so much easier. Your, your future self is gonna thank you so much. Now just check this out. You see that here, I don't have any of that. And like, if I wanted to add whatever underneath this, I would have to manually move everything down. 
such a pain. Um, but here, conveniently, <laughs> this is like the cooking shows where they have the food ready on the other side. But yeah, I have the food ready on this side. Casually just came out of the oven. Um, and this is all done throughout a layout just to show you what the different looks like. If I want to just add another line here, I'll just command D and it pushes everything down. Let's say I don't need the select all, but I just need the text up there. You just delete one. I want this and let's say I want this to be, I don't know, on the left side. It could be here and you just, I don't know, call it whatever. You can say whatever, but see, like I didn't have to do anything to move things around. This just, just proves how this is going to make your life so much easier. Now, Auto layout is not the most simple thing to use. I realize that it's not super, super easy, but this is why Figma did a really great job at creating videos and vi video tutorials specifically for auto layout. Maybe I'll do some in the future, but for now I'm trying to link it below. So get down in the description box and click on that Figma auto layout link. They do an amazing job. I mean, they actually made the product. So who else could explain it? They explain it best than better than anyone. So with this, Drum roll. Are you ready for the last one? Now hang on tight. Tip number 10 is templates. Now this is not a feature that exists in Figma. So you can, maybe, I don't know, maybe it didn't cross your mind, maybe you don't need it. But if you find yourself repeating over and over the same things, like um, maybe I always create the same pages within the document. Maybe I always put in a bunch of like old screens of my app to use as reference. Or maybe I want those iPhone mockups to always be in my files because I use them constantly. Or maybe arrows or post-its. Um, sometimes you're not ready to just import all the libraries or maybe you don't, if they're not libraries, they're just things that you have and may need. You can consider uh, creating your own template and it's not a real template, but you create a file a starter file, like a boilerplate, and you just duplicate that every time. Now, I don't have a lot of ways to show you, but I have my own template that I use every time, and I'm gonna link it down below. I've shared this in another video, um, but consider it if you want to include cover pages, um, structure, organization, dividers for how you want to divide up your screens, maybe a section for prototypes, it's also like a guideline to remind you like all the things that you have to do of a design. I don't know, I kind of like it. And it makes your life easier. This is a hint, Figma. Please create templates um, if you're not doing that already. <laughs> okay, so this was our last tip of the day. Thank you so much for following along and I hope this made your life easier. These are things that I could not live without. Um, I, I just rely on these things so much that it felt sort of bad not sharing it with people. Um, so if this is interesting, let me know. I'm happy to do more if I think of other tips and tricks that I use every day. Please comment and let me know what was your favorite tip? What blew your mind the most? Let me know. I'm super curious because some of these like I just found out last year and, and it just changed my life. Okay, cool. Well, enjoy your day with my friends and go back to designing and be as fast as you can so you can get more time for yourself. Cheers.